Hey there, building beds here in tunnel three today. It's gonna to be super cool. We already got the tunnel up, the plastic on, the baseboards are on and secured. This has been tarped for months, so it's ready to go. There's nothing growing in here. And like usual, we're gonna mark out the beds, broad fork it, and then bring in the cardboard and the compost and the wood chips like we always do with all the stuff. I've done several videos on this and I'll leave related videos down below for you guys to check out. We don't have enough compost to do the whole tunnel today, nor the manpower. <laughs> so we're gonna get as much as we can get done either today or to, and or tomorrow. And so one thing is always a bottleneck at my property here is getting materials in and the driveway. So let me show you that. All right, so you guys know I live in the suburbs and this is the end of my driveway here. And I've just commandeered this back section <laughs> for materials for the past four years or so. And it's tricky because I have to manage material coming in. And that's always a tricky thing. If no matter where you are, you always have to think about how you're getting mater materials in. So the tricky part here is that I need to get another load of compost in here. But to do that, I have to get rid of all this so the truck can get in and move it back. So I usually keep compost in the back. And that usually, those loads stay here a lot longer and we'll go through wood chips more often. So we put the wood chips in the front. And so that's why the tarp is over the compost because it kind of keeps them separate. But we're hoping to get maybe three-ish beds. I don't know, we'll see out of what's left here and then we'll get another delivery of compost soon. A lot of you guys ask me about compost all the time. There's several different types of compost. I would recommend you guys pick up Jesse's book and I'll leave that link down below. He does a really good job about discussing those different types of compost. But essentially the compost that most of us can buy is used for fertility and as an amendment and not to grow in. So luckily the company I buy compost from in the winter time, they also sell leaf mold and they do a custom mix of 50% leaf mold and 50% of their compost. And that's what I'll have coming in. They just let me know it was ready. So I'll hopefully get that in, in the next week or two and that'll be good for building the rest of these beds and probably my compost supply for all of next year. So we're gonna have to get rid of all this stuff and then hopefully get a new delivery of compost in next week or, or the week after. Starting to mark out the beds here and it's always important to take your time when you're doing this because you only do this once. We're building permanent beds, so I can't stress enough, like take your time, make sure you get everything nice and straight and laid out because you're not gonna move them afterwards. So just to give you an idea what's going on in here, uh, I've talked about some previous videos, but we're in a 14 by 100 foot Gothic Pro tunnel and we're gonna be getting eight 48 foot beds in here that are 30 inches wide. The reason why they're 48 is because the tunnel's 100 feet, we're gonna put two feet in the middle to separate the, the sets of beds and I'm gonna leave one foot on either end so that leaves 48 feet. Now in terms of the width we have 14 feet so um, we're gonna be using 12 inch walkways <clears throat> which I've done before in the other two tunnels. I really don't like 12 inch walkways I like them wider but when you only have 14 feet to work with that's um, that's what you got to deal with. Um, they all Farmer's Friend also sells 16 foot tunnels which I think I would have liked, but I, I just literally didn't have the space here. It's such a tight little area, but that's a whole other discussion. So the way this works is we're gonna have three 12 inch walkways and four 30 inch wide beds. So what's left is six inches on the sides. So let me show you how I do this. And for me, you know, I'm a former math teacher, so maybe this is just super simple in my head. So uh, I'll give you some tips here. But the nice thing is once you have the tunnel all laid out, you have a rectangle to work with. So, but if you're working out in the field, uh, to get a rectangle, you make sure the ends are the same length, the sides are the same length, and then you measure the diagonals. If the diagonals are all the, the same length, and then you got a rectangle. But we got a rectangle in here. So what I did here is I just ran a string. This is the middle hoop. We're in the middle of the tunnel here. And so I run a string across, and that gives me a nice line. And then I know I need six inches, so I just measured six inches in from either side and put, uh, put a stake. And these are 18-inch garden stakes. I got these at Home Depot. I use these all the time. They're great. They last a few seasons usually, and they're easy to replace, and it's just wood. So they're, they're inexpensive and simple. So six inches in on either side, and then I do that on the end as well. And then I run this string line here. So this goes from this post down to that other one that's six inches away. And then I measure, as I said, two feet in the middle. So one foot from the center line. So one foot here, I do that at all four. And then this is the corner of my bed. This is the edge of my bed. So once I run a string line from here across, and then also at the other end, I can then take a tape measure and just mark out my beds and everything should be nice and square. So hopefully that helps. Um, it's a pretty simple process this is what I've been doing and everything gets really straight and square and comes out pretty nice. So just to show you exactly what I'm talking about here, this is the string line that marks out the end of the beds and then I just mark out two and a half feet, one feet, two and a half feet, one feet, etc. And you might be thinking these stakes look a little bit tall, but we're going to be putting a lot of material in here. So depending on how much material you you know, you need to put in here and how soft your ground is. You could go with longer stakes, but I found 18 to work pretty well. 
going to go do this on the other side and then run string lines up and then uh, and then we'll get the broad forking. This is the first bed we're going to start working on here and after I put the string lines out I broad forked it and while broad forking it I realized it's super compacted. I mean I expect it to be but it's like really really compacted. That's not surprising at all because this there were no uh, beds here originally this was just the bottom area and after we tilled it and it's been sitting here with nothing growing and being tarped like it's very compacted so I'm gonna do something a little bit different than I usually do usually after broad fork I lay down cardboard and then go for compost but what we did is we put a little bit of compost down first and this is compost I got from Jane at Earth Care Farm so big shout out to Jane I realized I never gave her a shout out for this but she uh, she sent me a, um, a pallet of soil uh, her uh, garden soil or raised bed mix um, and it's just I just know Jane and how she creates her compost and it's just very diverse and very cool. So this is more of like an inoculating compost. We're just going to put this down and water it in. And I said, this is not a huge amount, but I just want to get some biology going on at the soil level uh, as quickly as possible. So I did a growers live with Jane. I'll leave a link to that video down below and all of her uh, information as well for her farm. Awesome lady. And um, the, the product that she makes is incredible. So we're going to do that. I'm going to wet this down a little bit and then we'll go for the normal thing. So cardboard, wet it down compost in the beds, wood chips in the walkways. Again, everyone always asks me how much compost we put down. I'll leave videos down below, as I said, but it's about two and a half yards per bed. It's about four or five inches. So there you go. Got one bed built and uh, this took us a little bit longer than we anticipated today. First of all, we got a late start because we had to do all the prep work. Also, it's been raining on and off pretty hard today and Gene and I were moving kind of slow, but I am pretty disgusting. But you know, one bed is done and it's a great start. I was hoping to get like Maybe two today would be a stretch, but we're gonna keep working on this tomorrow. Try to empty the pile in the driveway, try to get as many beds built as possible. So we'll see you then. Next morning, and we had a crazy thunderstorm roll through here last night. It rained really hard for a while. And when we have those kinds of rain events, it always makes you really grateful to have tunnels because, especially when you're putting out new beds, but in general, um, you know, if you get a heavy rain event, you can get a lot of erosion and lose a lot of soil, cause a lot of damage. So it was pretty much very little stress. But another thing that I realized about having tunnels, which is another benefit, I know I keep trying to tell you guys all the benefits of having tunnels because I love them so much, but we have a lot of trees around here and obviously in the fall, we get a lot of leaves that fall. And I didn't quite think of this as a benefit until recently, but if you look over here, you can see the ground is completely covered in leaves and we just put these wood chips down like two weeks ago. And I remember the first two seasons here, I had to spend a lot of time pulling leaves out of beds because they were basically smothering everything and keeping crops from growing and, and trapping too much moisture and all that stuff. So I had to spend a lot of time doing that. And you know, there's a few leaves that blow into the beds just through the sides, but generally there's like no leaves in the bed. So another great benefit. I already did my harvest this morning as production is starting to ramp up. I'm starting to bring out a little bit more food to restaurants, which feels amazing. I think that's going to continue to get better week to week throughout the, the fall and winter. I'm really excited about that. We're going to continue building beds today. We'll see how far we get. Gene's here helping out and uh, we either run out of time, energy or material. <laughs> so we'll see. So I'll try to finish up this second bed here. Gene's working on wood chips, I'm working on compost. So Gene, what do you think, man? <laughs> what are we gonna run out of first? Materials, time, or energy? Not time, not material. Okay, so. so it had to be the third one, what's the third one? Uh, energy. <laughs> energy, yeah. All right, well, we'll try to get this bed finished up. Got the second bed finished. Uh, Gene's still working on the wood chips here. It does take quite a lot of wood chips and after you walk on a little bit, it compresses quite a bit. So you'll have to add more. It usually takes a couple you know, additions before it kind of solidifies. And so that six inches on the outside, if you guys are curious, we fill that with wood chips. And the main reason is, um, you know, I thought about just putting soil in there, but you know, wood chips are free and it helps you know, increase diversity in the soil which I've talked about plenty of times with wood chips and why I like them. So you get a lot more fungal life in there. And I've noticed that in the other tunnels, that kind of just turns into soil uh, pretty quickly anyway. So 
that's what we've been using to fill in over there. And yeah, we're just working through here. But a couple uh, little pro tips I wanna give you for setting up beds like this in tight spaces. All right, I just wanna give you a few extra little details here. And I really love sharing the little details because I think it's really cool to hear those kinds of things from other people. And even if it's not applicable to your context, I think it's important <clears throat> sometimes to slow down and think about your process so that you can be a little bit more efficient with it. In the past, I've said, um, you know, one thing when you're doing this is to not just lay down all of the cardboard at the beginning because it's gonna blow away with the wind. You're gonna, you're gonna destroy it by running it over with wheelbarrows, stuff like that. But in this situation here, we built a lot of beds and tunnels and this is applicable for any small space you're building beds in, uh, like if, in weird parts of your backyard or, you know, things like that. So I think it's applicable for, for those kinds of things as well. But one here what we're doing is we are starting at the bed at the bottom and then working up. And the main reasons for that is that when you have the wheelbarrow here, it's easier to dump it downhill than it is to dump it uphill. So we start at that one and work our way up this way. Now, we're gonna stop after two and we're gonna build both of these at the same time. And the reason that for that is that when you're trying to put soil in the third one, it's really hard to dump it in from here because of the, the tunnels on the high side here. So we just kind of build these at the same time and just bring in the wheelbarrows you know, from the end and that works really well. So what we do is we hold off with the broad forking and the cardboard until we're ready to do it. So we'll just do that in like 10 or 15 foot sections. We'll broad fork, lay down cardboard, then bring in all the compost, and then just keep doing it a little bit by little bit. You know, for that reason, the cardboard doesn't get destroyed as you're rolling over it so many times with the wheelbarrow. And also, if you broad fork and then you roll the wheelbarrow over it a bunch of times, you're kind of defeating the purpose of uh, trying to loosen up that soil. So that's my thought process, and that's how we've been doing these tunnel uh, bed building projects, and it's been working out really well. Started building the third and fourth beds here. You can see at the end of the tunnel, and this is an example of what I was talking about with starting at one end and then working our way up. It works really, really well. And I sometimes get a lot of criticism about moving this much material in because it's expensive and it's not available everywhere. But frankly, for me, you know, and for everyone, we have three variables. It's time, energy, and money. And my soil is so garbage here. Um, it would take years probably to get it into decent shape. And this is an, almost a way to have instant beds. And I have access to this, and um, the investment in money, I think, is worth it because Investing your soil is probably one of the best investments and because it's covered with the tunnel I don't lose it during rain and, and things like that. So this is pretty much gonna stay here, which is great It does require a lot of work uh, to get it in here, but these are permanent beds and that big push is um, You know, it's just what it is, you know, get some friends together if you can or just Pound it out <laughs> and get it done And I think that leads me to really the title of this video is uh, you know the farmers gym and it's true like being a farmer being a gardener it's very physical and actually it feels great. Uh, you know, I've complained a lot about during the summertime with the heat, I was not out here as much as I'd like to be and being a little bit more sedentary and I didn't like the way it made me feel. So it does feel good to be out and about and working hard and sweating and like, you know, being physical and being tired. And uh, you know, as the weather's cooling off, it is allowing me to do that and get these projects done. And hopefully it's cooling off where you are too and you can get some more physical, you know, physically demanding outdoor large projects done because it's a little bit cooler. And I love working outside in the winter time. Of course, it's a little, it's pretty mild here in the winter. We can do stuff most of the winter. You know, our ground doesn't freeze here, but I know it's different for a lot of you guys. But uh, yeah, it's, it's good to stay active. Even in the winter time, I'm not a person that usually gets motivated to just go exercise, just to exercise. So, you know, doing stuff like this, it feels really great. Anyways, uh, we did a, put a big dent in the compost. So let me show you how far we got. Almost got through the whole pile. Looks like we got just like a little bit left here, maybe another half a bed's worth or so. So we'll get that taken care of and hopefully get another delivery in here. But uh, yeah, I've been super busy, as I mentioned in my last video. Uh, I apologize for making simple videos, just kind of talking to the camera, but that's kind of uh, what I got right now just because I'm so busy, but I want to take you guys along for the ride. And if you don't know, I do have a second channel that I restarted about content creation and videography. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll leave a link down below and maybe you guys can go over and check that out. Putting a lot of time and energy in there and having great conversations with creators. So if you're really looking to up your game with any sort of video cre content creation, that kind of stuff, go check it out. Otherwise, uh, we'll keep at it. I'm gonna start adding some uh, irrigation and some other projects in there and hopefully get those beds planted pretty soon. We'll take you guys along for the ride. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel if you're not already and we'll see you in the next one.